Welcome to uh, class two video lecture. Uh, today we're going to be covering chapter three in the text, uh, covering the topics of ohms and power laws, power and energy and efficiency with uh, a motor as an example. We're also going to review uh, some things we talked about uh, last time. We'll start out with uh, a review of scientific versus engineering notation. So uh, if we have a number like this, 1.23 times 10 to the fifth watts, and if we look at it without a power of 10, it's 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0. And, uh, if we put the decimal space here and we back up, there's one, two, three, four, and five. So that's how we get 1.23 times 10 to the fifth power. In engineering notation, it would be a 123 kilowatts. That would be one way of writing it, right? And it would also be 123 times 10 to the third watts, which is 123 kilowatts. Remember that in scientific notation, you have one place uh, in front of the decimal, which can be a number from 1 to 9. And in engineering notation, you have a number that would be one, two, nine, nine, nine. The next thing we're going to go over is prefixes. If you remember from last time, we have a T, Terra, a capital G, Giga, capital M, Mega, small k, Kilo. We have the unit which is equal to 1. We have milli, which is 1,000th. We have micro. We have nano. And pico, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 12th. Be sure to write these on your note card because you will uh, be referring to them quite often. In chapter two, we, we talked about uh, closed loop, polarity, voltage, current, and resistance. And uh, the relationship between voltage, let's just write that down, voltage, current, and resistance. That relationship we call Ohm's Law. And if you remember let me get to a clear screen here. If you remember, we use this notation. Remember this? E, I, or, that's a logical or, R, with a circle around it. So we can write the three uh, equations from that. If we cover up, if we want to find E, we cover up the E, and that's E equals I times R. If we want the current, I, we cover up I, and it's E over R. And if we want the resistance, 
its cover up uh, R, and it's E divided by I. E is, is called electromotive force. or voltage can be called either one and there's a linear uh, relationship between voltage current and resistance and it looks something like this we'll draw uh, a, a little graph here two axis where we have voltage at the bottom and we have current on the y-axis. Volt voltage on the x and current on the y. If we have um, a low resistance it would look something like this. Low R. But it is a, a linear relationship between voltage and current by the equations. And uh, if we have a, um, let's use this color, a high, resist high resistance, it would look something like this. High R. And if we had a, a short circuit, it would look like this on the graph. So a short circuit, the current can be infinitely high and the volt, but there's no voltage. Um, in contrast to that, an open circuit would look like this. Let me uh, use another color here. We'll use green this time. That would be down on, on this line. Okay. And uh, the open circuit, the voltage can be very high, but no current. Last time we talked about schematic symbols. And if you remember, we have a DC voltage supply as one. Let me switch back to, I like blue better here. There we go. I mean yellow, I'm sorry. Put you on that in yellow. I think that stands out better on this pad here, plus or minus. So that's DC voltage, voltage source. We had an AC voltage source, which is uh, the same thing but with a little squiggle in it, right? We had a, a single cell. You remember that from last time? We were drawing some schematics and it looked like this. We had a, a plus side and a wide bar. That would be a single cell. 1.5 volts. And then if you want to draw a battery, you use multiple ones. This symbol here, we have more than one. And that's a battery. You don't have to draw as many cells as you have in series, if you will, uh, but uh, you draw it this way with a plus and the voltage, which would be could be 9 volts. So this could be a 9 volt battery is equal to 6 times 1.5 volt. And you've all used these 9 volt batteries. I'll put it up by the camera here a little bit. Uh, if you open one of those up, it's actually 6 cells because a cell is always 1.5 volt with alkaline there's other types like lithium I think they're a little lower maybe around 1.4 but they're right in that uh, that area it depends on the the technology of the battery uh, we also have a um, a meter okay which we want to talk about here let's 
draw that. It's on the can. Okay, that looks great. It has a, a reading a readout here, and then the dial. And it has typically three uh, connections. And that's a digital meter. And there's various scales, and they're selected by uh, by this dial. You'll have ohms, which the little symbol is the ohm symbol, omega. You have DC, and AC. It looks like that. And these typically will measure both voltage and current in AC and DC. Let's see. So we also had an ammeter, which looks like this, a voltmeter. And a switch. And if we draw a circuit, a voltage source with a switch. Oh, no, let's take that out. With an ammeter in line. Resistor and a voltmeter across the resistor. Remember that uh, current flows through the ammeter. Let's draw that in another color. through the resistor and back to the source. Only a tiny amount flows through the voltmeter. Very, very small in the micro or, or nano uh, amps uh, re uh, region. So looking at uh, some problems with Ohm's Law, oh, let's go back to yellow. We have uh, three uh, different circuits, this, I'm sorry, the same circuit to measure three different parameters. We'll start out with a, a voltage source. Plus and minus five, five volt source. And it's a two ohm resistor. And the current is unknown, and that's what we're going to determine. In the next circuit, same circuit. We have a 10 volt source. We have 5 amps flowing through the circuit, and we have a resistance that's unknown. In the last uh, example here of the same circuit, We have a, v a voltage source. We don't know what that is. That's the question mark. 
we have a 10 amp current and a 2 ohm resistor so in this example we need to determine I so we know from our triad that we were looking at before covering up I I equals E over R so I equals 5 volts over 2 ohms equals 2.5 amps in the next configuration here uh, we're, we're gonna we need to measure R we know the voltage V or E and the uh, current which is 5 amps so R equals E over I so R equals 10 volts over uh, 5 amps and this equals 2 ohms in the last example we want to compute uh, the voltage source so again solving for E covering up E E equals I times R it equals 10 amps times 2 ohms and E equals 20 volts That completes our review of Chapter 2, and now we'll transition over to uh, Chapter 3, where we'll talk about uh, power, energy, and efficiency. If we have a circuit uh, like so, we have a voltage source and a resistor. what happens to the energy that goes through the resistor? Well, it's dissipated as heat. Resistors are, are everywhere um, in wi wire. Wire has a resistance. You get a current flowing through a wire. Uh, a lot of times uh, uh, in residential or industrial installations, uh, if, if the, the wire isn't heavy enough, it can overheat and then cause a fire. So uh, everything has uh, uh, resistance components, motors, to name a few. Uh, this represents, uh, let me just draw another circuit here. Uh, So uh, this is another representation uh, of, a, of a motor in a circuit that this resistance here, this resistor, represents heat loss lost by the motor. The, the motor has wires in it. that get hot. So let's uh, look at Ohm's law and then the power law. If we review Ohm's law, we have the our triad here again as we have seen many times before now. That's Ohm's law, and this is the power law, P over current, or E. So that's Ohm's law. This is the power law. So 
So let's write the equations again for the Ohm, for Ohm's law. Remember it was E equals I times R. I equals E over R. And R equals E over I. Now for the power law, P, again, covering up the, the P, and then we have current times voltage. I equals P divided by E, and E equals power divided by current. Doing the math, power equals I times E equals I squared over R. I'm sorry, I me back up there, I made a mistake there. I squared R equals E squared over R. So we have uh, three types of power problems here. We have a voltage source, 10 volts, connected to a resistor. And there's um, two amps in the circuit. And we have a another voltage source. Two ohm resistor, and that's a 20 volt source. And then our last example voltage source with an 8 ohm resistor and 3 amps of current in the circuit. So we want to calculate the power. So P equals I times E, power equals 2 times 10, power equals uh, 20 watts. In the second example here, power equals E squared over R, which equals 20 squared squared divided by two two ohms and that equals 200 watts in the last example here we have power equal to i squared r power equals 3 squared times 8 power equals 72 watts. So, uh, what, what does this have to do with a, a motor, you might ask yourself. So we have a motor in a shaft. Let's see how good I can draw that. There's a That's the shaft. So we have a mechanical power, which is the shaft turning. And then we have wires that come into the motor. That have electrical power.
And uh, here's some equations for the note card. One horsepower, one HP equals 746 watts. Horsepower equals foot. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's let's erase that. Pound feet or foot pounds. It's also called, which is a torque times RPM, which is speed. And that's divided by 5252. And then efficiency, which looks like a, an N, it's actually a Greek uh, symbol called eta. Um, and that is equal to P out divided by P in. So now uh, we're going to do a little example here. We want to find torque QUE for a 5 horsepower motor running at 3550 RPM. So using the equation we had uh, above here, uh, it would be 5 equals torque times 3550 divided by 5252. Or Solving for torque, bring torque, bring these other numbers to the other side, it'll look like this. Torque equals 5 times 5252, 50, 5252 divided by 35. 50, and that equals 7.4 foot-pounds, or pound-feet. It can, it can be uh, written either way. So now we want to convert horsepower to kilowatts using dimensional analysis. So if we have 5 HP parentheses 746 watts over 1 HP, 1 horsepower, we can cross out cross out the horsepowers and we are left with 3.73 kilowatts now we'll calculate uh, the electrical power for uh, power for a 75 horsepower motor so it's 75 again using dimensional analysis so 
246 watts over 1 HP and we cross out the net equal to 56 kilowatts. So drawing a circuit uh, here of the motor We'll draw a voltage source. Oh. Let's, see. Let's see if I can draw a straighter line than that. There we go. Okay, so we have a 75 horsepower motor and a 56 kilowatt generator and we can draw uh, a partition here let's do it in blue so this separates the mechanical side and the electrical side so this is the mechanical side and this is the electrical side So, as we look at this, uh, no, no motor would do this. In other words, it there's a 100% efficiency between the electric source and the motor. So, what do we forget here? Well, we forgot wires, right? We talked about that earlier, but we didn't include it in the schematic here. Wires give off heat and that's where efficiency comes in. So if we write efficiency eta equals P out which is mechanical that's our motor turning motor and over PN is uh, electrical. So as I said earlier, in the real world, uh, no motor is 100% efficient. So to describe that, we have what's called a power flow diagram. And this is what it looks like. So we have uh, power in here, and we have power out, and let me draw this in red, and this is power lost. So now we'll calculate the efficiency. So you have Eta equal to p power out over power in. And so another way to write this would be power out over power out plus power loss. Going back to our power uh, power flow diagram, I think you can see you know why that is. So let's take a uh, make an example now. If we take a 75 horsepower motor Let the efficiency equal 
and we can see that P out, power out, is equal to 75 horsepower times 746 watts over 1 horsepower and it approximately equals 56 kilowatts. So we have uh, point, 0.092 equals 56 kilowatts divided by power in. So power in equals approximately 61 kW. Plotting this to the uh, power flow diagram, it looks like this. So we got 61 kilowatts. Power in and 56 kilowatts power out and the power loss is 5 kilowatts five kilowatts is a, is a lot of power and it would be equivalent to uh, several space heaters that you might have at home so drawing this in the circuit looks like this with our motor so we have five, 5 kilowatts here that's our heat loss we have a 56 kilowatt motor or 75 horsepower and we have 61 kilowatts on the input so if we're uh, paying for electricity uh, we would use this equation for energy is power power times time and uh, energy is how much power is how fast and time is how long The units of energy can be uh, in several, uh, there's several units. Uh, one is horsepower hour, BTUs, I'm sure you've heard of many of these. Calories, abbreviated cal, joule, which is in the, in the metric system and kilowatt hours. In this course we will use uh, only uh, HP horsepower hours and kilowatt hours. As an example uh, for energy we can say the cost of energy is five cents per kilowatt hour which is pretty low. Uh, it could be uh, an industri industrial rate that uses a lot of power, but typically, uh, certainly residential is up to 15 to over 20 cents an hour. 
but we want to find the cost to run a 75 horsepower motor at 92% efficiency for one month. One month. So energy. Oh, need an hour in there. Equal to power times time. And that will, will equal 61 kilowatts times 24 hours in a day times 30 days. And that equal to 44 megawatt hours, megawatt hours, and that equals 44,000 kilowatt hours. Okay. And uh, looking at the cost, we would say that we have 44,000 kilowatt hours. times the rate cost 0 0.05 cents per kilowatt hour again using our dimensional analysis here this goes out this goes out and that equals twenty two hundred dollars so every month it would cost you $2,200 to run a 75 horsepower motor 24-7. And that will conclude the lecture for today, and uh, we'll see you next time.